Let me know when everybody's there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And when they had come out to the house, they saw a young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and mirth. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take thy young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod had saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and set forth and slew all of the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof, from two years younger and younger, according to the time which he had diligently inquired. Of the wise men, you may be seated. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for the service. We ask you, Lord God, that you would visit us today and be with us today. Lord, I don't proclaim to have anything special here that I could uh, refer to these men or say to these guys, but Lord God, you have. Lord, this is your message. This is what you have given me to share today. And Lord, I just defer unto you to be able to present it, to, to be able to give it, to be able to say all that needs to be said today, Lord. I'm just your conduit, Lord. I hope I and pray, Lord God, I could hide behind the cross, Lord, and you could just do all that you need to do here, Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would flow through the pews of this chapel, that you would have your way with every heart, including this preacher. And I pray that your day be highly lifted up and be glorified and honored. And it's in your holy name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. Back in 1848, there was a play that was called A Christmas Carol, written by Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens grew up in poor family. At the age of 12, he worked in a factory to support his family. His dad was in prison. His dad was in prison and he saw that there was the wealthy group of people that had everything and then there was the poor that had nothing. And he spoke about those things when he started to write. But when he wrote the Christmas Carol, it was for this reason alone that he had saw the greed of people that had everything. And then he saw the people that were poor that had absolutely nothing. But he had noticed this one thing. That the people that didn't have anything were happy. Because they had Jesus in their heart. If they had Jesus in their heart. But the people that had everything were miserable. Because they were so greedy for one more dollar. That they didn't have any happiness in their hearts. And so he went on to write a play called A Christmas Carol. The word carol is a song that you write about the birth of Christ. And so he wrote this play about a man by the name of... Ebenezer Scrooge and Ebenezer had it at all he had a big huge house that he inherited he had money he was popular he had fame but he was greedy he his heart was so stone cold he had no no heart or appetite for anything of giving to other people that were less fortunate to help those that were in need even to help his own employee the only thing he thought about was himself and what was in it for him. He lived his whole life this way. And he became a, a wretched old man, a, a man that was just full of greed and couldn't see beyond anything other than himself and his own world. He became his own God and all he thought about was one more dollar. And here was the poor Bob Cratchit that worked for him making a pittance of, a, of money, but yet Bob was happy. And Bob was not only happy, he gave thanks to the Lord because he had a job, because he had money. And as you know the story, he had a son that was ill and a son that would never make it unless he gained more money to be able to be 
go to the doctor and get what he needed to be able to be made well. But yet Scrooge would never give him that extra money that he needed to be able to help his son. And so one night, as you know the story as well as I do, there came a time when he was old and he was ready to die. And there was three ghosts that appeared before him. There was a ghost that appeared from his past and revealed to him how he wasted all of his youth, accomplished nothing, and had nothing to, nothing to show for himself for all the years except for money in a house. And then came his current situation. A ghost showed him that all his relatives were mocking him, were making fun out of him because of his lifestyle. But he noticed this one thing as the ghost took him around and showed him that Bob Cratchit, the man that had the most to be able to say against him, did not speak bitterly of his own employer. But Bob Cratchit was a godly man and he was just thankful for what he had. And he had a, a servant's heart and he was thankful and, and he prayed and he would ask God somehow to be able to help his child to live. Although they were in poverty, in terrible poverty. And then there came the time of the ghost of the future. And you could see Ebenezer's heart just being transformed and melted. That his co-worker actually liked him. Thought highly of him when no one else isn't even his own family did. And the ghost of his future looked at him and saw, he saw uh, in, in humility the disgust of what it was like to live his life. That this man would live his whole life and never turn to the Lord. Never gain the things of God. Die with a stone cart. And at his funeral no one would show up. Because he was absolutely thinking about himself, never did anything for his community, never did for the common man, never looked for those that needed help, but in all things, the only thing he looked for was himself. And his heart started to melt, and it started to wonder, what is this life that I lead? What is it in it for me if I lead this life and I've got absolutely nothing to show for it? And he begins to get saved. And as he becomes saved, and he gets to know the Lord as his personal Savior. His heart has changed overnight. And as you know the story, he gives away a lot of money, gives away a lot of things. And he changes into the man of God that the Lord had always intended him to be. And of course gives his co-worker a raise and his son gets well and doesn't die. And but the story of Jesus at this time, we have a king that looks very much like the old Scrooge. A man that was a tyrant. A man that couldn't stand to be in any kind of, uh, of, any kind of wrestling for a position or wealth. King Herod was the King Herod the Great. And as King Herod the Great stood upon his castle and he became the, the man that was in charge. He didn't want to have anything to do with God, didn't want to have anything to do with the things of God. And he heard as he sought out that there's a baby, Jesus, that has come and he inquired, where is this child that I may seek him, that I may come to know him, but it was all a trap to be able to kill him. You see, he didn't want Jesus to be in competition with him for the throne. He didn't want Jesus to compete with him for his position. He didn't want Jesus to be able to be able to uh, tell him how he should live his life. How, what he should do, what he shouldn't do. No, the King Herod was happy to live his life his way. He became his own God like Ebenezer Scrooge. Did whatever he wanted to, and he was not accountable to anyone. And so, King Herod, learning that their Messiah had come, interestingly, he sought, and he knew that the Messiah had come. He knew that Jesus would come, and he did everything in his power, including what I read, to be able to kill all the babies two years or younger. That Jesus would never come to the throne and take his position. But gentlemen, I am here today to tell you something that King Herod didn't know. 
When God sets out on a promise, when God says this is the way it's going to be, there is no demon in hell that's going to reverse it. There's no one on the face of the earth that's going to outdo the will of God. There's no, there's no demon, there's no man, there's nobody ever lived that could overturn what God has set in stone. This would be the day that God said his Messiah would come. This is the day the Lord said the Son of Man would come. This is the day that the child would come. The very Lamb of God would come into the earth. And nothing the king would do. Nothing that no person in Jerusalem would do. And nothing that the demons in hell could do. Could overturn that. The promises of God, gentlemen, are yea and amen. And if he has promised you something, he's going to deliver it. And it don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter how dark or how bleak the situation may be. If it is of God and he promised it, it will happen. Amen. amen. And so King Herod thought he could overturn the will of God. He thought within himself he had the power. He was not about to bow a knee to God. Ebenezer Scrooge thought the same thing. He had this saying that he continually said when anybody brought up the Lord or somebody would bring up something to do that was of Christian, that was of Christian value. He said, bah humbug. In disgust of the things of Christmas, in disgust of the things that are of good that we should be doing. Even if you don't know Christ, helping your fellow man, helping the, the poor, the disadvantaged, and those that are in need, helping those people is something you should just do because this is what God has written upon your heart. But Ebenezer wasn't about to let this Jesus have room into his heart until it was revealed to him his whole life. They say, as Josephus wrote about the death of King Herod, they said that he died in agonizing pain. That he died with the worms crawling at his body and chewing him up. And that he died a terrible death. Never coming to the Lord. Never knowing the Lord Jesus in his life. Thinking that he was in charge of his future. Thinking that all everything revolved around him. The difference between the two was that Ebenezer Scrooge saw his future and turned to the Lord. And yet Herod, King Herod, when he had heard these things about the Lord, only had death and destruction in his mind. The wicked and nasty king that he was had nothing to do with the Lord and turning to the Lord for his help. But everything had to do with himself. I wonder this Christmas season, gentlemen, as we look at these two men, one obviously fictional, but another one that lived. In this world, you have a choice. You can either live like the Ebenezer Scrooges of this world and finally come to the realization that your life has been wasted away and that you need Christ. To be able to change your heart. Or you can live like King Herod did. It's all about me. The world is all about me. The world revolves around me. And it has nothing to do with Christmas. It has nothing to do with Christ. It has nothing to do with a babe in a manger. It has nothing to do with the second son. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead, coming down to this earth to be able to be born in a lonely manger. We have to make a decision on what we think is important, and what we deem as important. And there are plenty of people in this day and age that live the Ebenezer Scrooge life. They're full of greed, they're full of envy, they're full of everything has to do with themselves. And the more material things that they can gain, the more material wealth they can have, that's all, that's all what it's about to them. But you find that when they pass from this life to the next, that they have made some terrible decisions. There's a bumper sticker out there, and it's still out there. It says, the, white, the man with the most toys wins. But I tell you, the man that has the most toys and doesn't know Christ loses. Because you need Jesus Christ. 
This world is temporal. Your life on this world is temporal. Scrooge saw that nobody was going to remember him. And how it is that pride will blind you of the reality of who you are. It amazes me how pride can help you to deny things that are so in your face that you still can't see them. Blind, blindness is all a part of this pride. And in this pride, you think you're doing well. You think that everything is roses. On the outside, all you see is what you see. But the Lord looks on the inside of man. And he looks at the heart. And he looked at Ebenezer's heart. And it was stone cold. It was cold as a rock. As a cold coal. And yet the gospel tells us that God is able to break up the fallow ground in a man's heart. And in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I will replace that stone heart with a heart of flesh. A flesh that will know Christ. A heart that can breathe. A heart that can live. A heart that can have life in it. And a heart that can transform the life into the light of Christ in within him. God is able to do that for that heart. But the heart of the King Herods of this world... Who believe that everything revolves them and everything is about them and they can't see bowing down to a, a God they can't see. They see all of the idols and things in front of them. They see all the false gods that are in front of them and they say, hey, I found whatever I'm looking for. I can see it right in front of me. And yet it is the very Christ that we cannot see that has made himself more real than the things that are tangible that you and I could see. And yet it is. This Christmas day that we have coming up in 2014. Where people are running around with their heads chopped off. Looking for this special present. Looking for that present. Looking to go into debt. I can tell you with the job that I have. That this is the time of the season when it happens. A few months later on. Kids aren't even playing with the toys anymore. They're not even playing with that, but they're playing with the boxes, the toys came in. <laughs> I, I don't get it, but I was a kid and I did the same thing. I, I, I grew up in low income housing in, the, in Menominee Falls, and uh, we, took the, we took the presents out of the boxes, and we took the boxes and we slid down a hill for, uh, because we didn't have a, a sled. So we used that for a sled, we used the cardboard boxes. My cat likes laying on plastic, and I get her a nice little sleep thing to sleep in she's happy on plastic i don't get it but that's the world that we live in the world's interested in the material things but the greatest gift you could ever have the greatest gift came to us two thousand years ago and that is the person of the lord jesus christ who divested himself all his glory came down to this earth took upon himself the former man a hundred percent man a hundred percent god and came to die for the sins of mankind Gentlemen, there is no better gift that you could have at Christmas time than to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no better gift than to be able to come to the realization as Ebenezer Scrooge did and to say, you know what? I'm looking back in my life. I'm seeing the world. I've seen it being played as a videotape before me. And I see that I've not accomplished much. I've not done very much. And if I continue on the way that I'm living, I'm bound to come to the same ruin as King Herod did. I, I, I'll be lifeless. I'll be hopeless. I won't have anything. But you know what? Ebenezer Scrooge turned to the Lord. And this day that we live in now, that decision is yours as well. You can turn to the Lord and know him as Lord and Savior. Your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Christmas, I will guarantee you, if you come to know Jesus, Christmas will take out a whole new meaning to you, for you. I, I guarantee it. I can't even describe my first Christmas when I gave my life to the Lord and saw Christmas in a whole other way. It was nothing like what it was. And for the first time, I realized I didn't need alcohol. I didn't need drugs. I didn't need all the things that I was 
desperately seeking after that I thought I needed in my life to have a merry time during Christmas. No, I was able to understand because I was finally in my right mind. I was able to understand that I was a sinner in need of salvation. And the Lord Jesus Christ reached out his hand from heaven and gave it to, extended it out to this sinful man and said, Hey, Mike, I know you don't deserve me. I know you're never going to ask for me, but I'm going to save your soul. Gentlemen, he wants to do the same for you that don't know him. Wants to do the same. This Christmas time is a very special time. A time when you can reflect on the Lord Jesus. A time when you can look at him either as a babe in the manger. Or you can look upon him as the one who died upon the cross for your sins. The plan of salvation was right before the very foundations of the world. King Herod thought he could stop that. He, he really thought that he could get rid of all the babies in the, in, that were in his region. And it would never come to pass. But it was still, still in God's hands. And the baby did come. And the, the baby did grow. And we know the rest of the story. That at the age of 33, give or take some months, that Jesus died on the cross. It's a wonderful story. Either we can say bah humbug to this holiday season. We can say no to the Lord Jesus. We have that right. We have that right and that will to be able to say no to the Lord. And be like the old Ebenezer Scrooges. Or we could yell out as Ebenezer Scrooge did that morning. That Christmas morning when he opened his doors. He opened his windows after he woke up. And he yelled down in the street if you remember the movie. And he cried and he said... Son, what time is it? What day is it? And he said, sir, it is Christmas. And Abraham, Abraham Scrooge was so excited. Abraham Scrooge said, thank you, Jesus. I didn't miss it. I didn't miss the day. I didn't miss Christmas. And he was so excited. And of course, you know the rest of the movie. And I wonder if that will be the happy ending for someone in this place today. Will it be the happy ending to someone's life here that Christmas Day will mean something bright? That something, will, the Christmas Day will mean something other than what it has. The world lives in darkness and the world is happy with it. But the Jesus came into the world, the light came into the world. I look at all the beautiful Christmas lights that are out on the houses, on the buildings, on the trees, and everywhere. I, I look at those new LED ones. They look kind of nice. I look at the old ones. I look at the new, but they're all lights to me. They, they all look wonderful to me. And I look at them, and every time I see the lights, it reminds me of the light of Christ. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. He come, and he come. And he came and he born in a manger. The three wise men being smart enough to know that he was the Messiah. Came to be able to see him. Being warned in a dream that they should not go back. Took another route back. When you come and Jesus is before you and you meet the Lord Jesus. Are you going to come to him and stay with him? And walk out a different way than the way that you came in? Or are you going back to the same old life? Jesus says you can come to him and walk out of this place a different way than you walked in. That your destiny will be on the narrow road. The, the straight and narrow road that leads to Christ, leads to salvation. It doesn't have to be on that wide road that leads to destruction. The decision, gentlemen, is yours. It's mine. And we can live either with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. And celebrate his birth. And celebrate what he's done on the cross. Or we can say bah humbug. The heck with this Christmas time and this Christmas season. I'll gather all I can. I'll take whatever I can. Whoever offers me anything for free, I'll grab it. But I'm not turning to the Lord for help. It's a tragedy that we live in. It's a tragedy that in this material world that we live in, that so much attention has been placed on things, on material. Somebody has something that you don't have. I 
been going through a rough time with my vehicle breaking down and, and, and getting it fixed. And I, I look at the people with those brand new cars and the brand new SUVs and four by fours. And I said, Lord, I wish I had something like that. Although it's never been in my budget and never will be. Um, but it's nice. But you look and you go, hey, here I'm serving you, Lord. I don't have hardly a vehicle to get from point A to point B, but it starts, it'll go, but it, God knows what will happen between a, point A and point B. But the Lord says, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. And he does. Interestingly, that I, I took my truck to get fixed, and this has nothing to do with the story, but it has everything to do with it, I guess. I went to get something fixed on it. I can't get gas in my gas tank. It won't go. There's some problem with my gas tank. But in telling me what was wrong with it, they fixed two other things that were wrong with my truck that they didn't even know they fixed. They disconnected the battery to work on it. And when they did that, they were able to fix two other problems that they didn't know I had, but I knew I had. So God has been good. And God is good even in the midst of the storm. He's good and he's worthy of all praise and glory. Jesus and his family ran for Egypt, took off in the middle of the night to be able to keep him. And then when King Herod died, they returned. They returned. Every prophecy of the Lord Jesus came true exactly, exactly as it was planned. They say that if you take all of the prophecies of the Lord Jesus, mathematically, it's impossible for them to come true exactly the way they did. But to demonstrate it, a man, a magician said, if you take golf balls and you fill the entire state of Texas with golf balls up to your knee, and then you take one golf ball and you paint it black, and you toss it somewhere in the state of Texas, somewhere, and then you take a blind man, or you take a man and you wrap him up with uh, the covering so he can't see. You spin him around several times and you tell him to wander off into Texas. And to find that one golf ball that's painted black. Mathematicians will tell you those are the odds of all the prophecies of Christ being born coming to fulfillment exactly the way they happened. It's an impossibility. But like... Zacharias said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. Salvation was impossible for man to achieve the righteousness of Christ. But through Christ, righteousness is available. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the 445 today. We thank you, Lord God, for the lesson on Ebenezer Scrooge and the lesson that we learned from Herod the Great, our King Herod. Father, we pray that today men would not be lost, that men would come to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray that today would be the day of salvation for someone that does not know you. Is there any men here today that would raise a hand and say, today I don't know the Lord, but I want to know him this Christmas season. Would any man here raise a hand and say, today I want to know Christ. Today I want to know Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for you. Let's pray for those that have raised hands. And if you could pray out a simple prayer, nothing magical, but if it comes to the depth of your heart, the Bible says you're saved. And then I want to pray for the rest of you. And I look forward to Christmas Day when I could preach here for chapel service at Christmas Day, the message that God's laid on my heart. Yes. Heavenly Father, knowing that I'm a sinner and that you died for sinners, I repent for living my life my way. I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. Change my ways, Lord God. Make me into a man of God. Holy Spirit of God, come to live within me. Write my name into the Lamb's book of life. Grant me this eternal life. And help me to be on that straight and narrow road. Help me, Lord God, to live for you all the days of my life. And for the rest of my friends here, Lord God, I pray for them, my brothers. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help them this Christmas season. I pray, God, for re reconciliation in families. I pray, Lord God, for your strength and your power and your might to be seated within their lives. And I pray, Lord, that you would do a marvelous work. I pray that you would help those, Lord God, this season to know you as Lord, Savior, that don't know you.